So, we've learned some of the gas laws. There are other ones. We're going to talk about two in this lecture. One is called Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, and the other is called Graham's Law of Diffusion and Effusion. Uh, pretty simple concepts, but just so that we have a complete idea of how the gas laws operate. Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Basically what this says is that when you have a mixture of gases, each gas exerts its own pressure based on how many particles there are, what the volume is, the temperature, the pressure, the usual variables, right? So if I have a mixture of, say, uh, carbon dioxide, argon, water vapor, helium, each of those gases by itself would have a certain pressure based on how many particles there are in the volume and temperature, all the conditions. If you're mixing those gases together and they're not chemically reacting with one another, then you can add up those partial pressures for each of the gases and you'll get the total pressure of the gas, the gas mixture in the container, which should make sense, right? If you have a mixture of gases, it doesn't matter what those gases are, they're all these particles at a certain volume, pressure, and temperature that are exerting a certain number of collisions, a certain pressure. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a, this, this law I sort of think of as like the obvious law, right? That if you add up the partial pressures of a gas, you get the total pressure of the mixture in a container, right? So for example, I've got a container, it contains carbon dioxide and argon. It's the container's pressure, the gases in that container are at one atmosphere. The partial pressure of the carbon dioxide is 0 0.830. What's the partial pressure of the argon? Well, I know that the total pressure is the sum of the two partial pressures. So really, all I have to do is subtract the pressure of the carbon dioxide from atmospheric pressure, which is the total pressure, and I get the pressure of argon, which is 0.17 atmospheres. Super easy. Okay. Uh, this law will come into play later on when we learn something called the ideal gas law. Uh, it's a convenient way of finding out the pressure of one gas in a mixture, and then we can do other things with that. The second law that I want to talk about is Graham's Law of Effusion and Diffusion. We'll talk about what effusion and diffusion are and what they mean in just a second, but basically we want to understand that what we're talking about is how fast these particles are moving, what we call the speed, okay, or the velocity. The velocity of gas particles is dependent on two factors. One, what temperature the system has, because we know the temperature is kinetic energy, and so the more kinetic energy, the faster they move. The other and more important factor about the velocity is the mass of the particles itself. Some gas particles are very small, like helium. Helium is tiny. It doesn't have a very large mass at all. Whereas if you have something like hexane, hexane gas or vapor has a tremendously high mass. It's, it's a lot bigger than helium. So the bigger the particle is, the, small, the slower it's gonna, gonna go, okay? If you think of sort of a race between a, uh, a semi-trailer and a sports car, the sports car is lighter, right? Never mind the, the power of the engine, the, the semi actually has a more powerful engine because it has to pull a larger weight, but the semi is gonna go more slowly than the sports car is because the sports car has less mass to move. Same thing with gas particles, okay? So larger particles move more slowly. You can actually calculate a numerical value for the speed of gas particles using something called a root mean square. We'll talk more about that later on in the year after we talk about moles and molar mass and all of that stuff. Okay. So diffusion, you've heard this before, I'm sure, right? Diffusion is where gaseous atoms and molecules go from areas where there's lots of them, high concentration, to where areas where there's not. So if you think of the perfume bottle in the back of the room, you open up a perfume bottle, after a short period of time, you'll start to smell the perfume everywhere in the room because those gas particles have traveled to take up as much space as you're now giving them. You can sort of see a little uh, diagram of what this looks like at the bottom here. The, the red particles before they diffuse are sort of together, but then afterwards they're more spread out. Okay, and this is a natural process that happens because gases want to take up the space you give them. Even if there are other particles of gas there already because there's so much space in between them. Effusion is when you have a gas passing through a small opening. Now, typically we talk about gas particles moving along a, what's called the mean free path. That's just how far they can go before they hit something. The more particles there are, obviously, the shorter the mean free path. Effusion happens when a gas passes through a hole, a small opening, that's smaller than that average distance that they can travel. So in other words, they have to hit that opening perfectly to get through it. 
okay? The idea is that typically that means one particle is going through at a time. Now, if you have nothing on the other side of that opening to stop the gases as they try to go through, then they're going to go through that hole and eventually they'll spread out to take up both sides of that, that opening. The bigger particles, so if you look at this little diagram here, we've got helium, tiny little particle, uh, those are going to get through that opening much more quickly because of how small they are compared to something like ethylene oxide, which is a much larger molecule. Not many of those are going to get through in the same amount of time. So both diffusion and effusion, the, the rate that this happens at is directly proportional to how small or how large the particle is. Smaller particles are going to diffuse much faster and they're going to go through this opening. They're going to effuse much faster. Larger particles take much longer to go because they move more slowly. And therefore, in diffusion, they take longer to take up the space. And in effusion, they take, it's less likely that they'll be able to get through that hole because of how slowly they're moving. That's really it. There are other gas laws, but those are the ones that we're going to focus on at this time. So make sure you take good notes, and we'll see you next time.